Just a couple of days ago, we were expecting an announcement of the Canon EOS R5 Mark II in the second quarter. But then Canon Rumors came out with a post saying, yep, yeah, nope, sorry, expect it in 2024. But I've got some really good news for you, a consolation prize. If you own the Canon EOS R5, a big firmware update's coming to you that's going to provide lots of capabilities, including the removal of that 30-minute record limit. And when I covered that story, I said in terms of other specifications to make this a big firmware update, let's take a look at the Sony a7R5 and see what capabilities it has that Canon could take and leverage in its three-year-old camera. And one of those capabilities I mentioned was pixel shift. Well, today, Canon Rumors posted a story about pixel shift coming to the Canon EOS R5 in a firmware update, in that big firmware update that is most likely going to be called Firmware 1.8. Then behind the scenes, I reached out to Craig who posted the story and I asked him a couple of questions. Was able to get confirmation about this capability coming in a firmware update, but also I asked him questions about the fee. Many of you were asking me, Simon, are we going to have to pay for this firmware update? So I've got an update there and on additional capabilities. And I'll get to those details in a moment, but first, please do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter, subscribe to this channel, share, choose all notifications, like, comment, and all that great stuff. It's greatly appreciated. It really helps me out, and it helps this channel grow. I was a little bit disappointed, like you, that the Canon EOS R5 Mark II isn't going to be coming out this year. I did a poll, and 45% of you would rather have the Canon EOS R5 Mark II over a big firmware update for the Mark I. But still, I mean, I looked at this and I thought, you know, we're getting a big firmware update, so that's a pretty good consolation prize. After all, the Canon EOS R5 Mark II wasn't even on our radar until Canon announced the Canon EOS R6 Mark II. And to be getting it sometime in 2024, probably early 2024, that isn't so bad. But to get this firmware update, but that's pretty impressive. And one of the things I said at the time was, I said, all we have to do is look at the Sony a7R5. This camera was just recently announced. It doesn't have the same video capabilities as the Canon EOS R5, a camera that was announced some three years ago. A better camera in terms of video capabilities, but when it comes to stills capabilities, not nearly as much. And one of the things I said at the time is that I wouldn't be surprised if Canon, just to tease Sony a little bit, will take some capabilities that Sony has in that camera and bring them over to the Canon EOS R5 Mark II. And one of those that I speculated, one of those that I thought would be a really big coup is if Canon could take pixel shift. The same capability found in the Sony a7R5, and what's remarkable about this capability is the Sony a7R5 found a way to be able to take these photos, these high megapixel stills of 240 megapixels, and to be able to produce them without any sort of artifacts, even when you have subjects like cars moving in the scene, whether you have people or animals, or even just simply blades of grass or the leaves on the trees. So if Canon can do that, I thought, wow. Well, Canon Rumors this morning has gone ahead and said, one feature that may be coming to the Canon EOS R5 for still shooters is pixel shift. There are currently no EOS R cameras with this capability. And that's pretty significant because we don't have pixel shift in the Canon EOS R3. We don't have it in the R5, the R6 Mark II, the R7, the R10, the R50, or even the R8. But the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, to get it in a firmware update? Wow, that would be significant. Now, I do expect it in the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, but I was just speculating. So I reached out to Craig at Canon Rumors and I asked him about this and here's what he had to say. Not only pixel shift, but image stabilization control. You will be able to select which image stabilization is being used. You can select IBIS, image stabilization, combined or off. So pretty exciting. And again, I can't get into the details of what source this is coming from other than this was a conversation I had with Craig. Quite often I'll reach out to Craig after a story's published and ask him some questions going, you know, really, we're getting this or anything else you'd like to share? And I don't always get any other information. Usually everything is right in there, but I was lucky today to be able to get some more information. Now that image stabilization control is rather interesting. We do have a frustration with seeing that wobble, and I do want to see that wobble fixed in a firmware update. But right now, if I want to turn IBIS off on the Canon EOS R5, well, I can't, or I can depending on what lens is attached. Now, if I take this 16 millimeter, where is it right here? The 16 millimeter f2.8, and I put it on the R5, I can actually turn off IBIS, which you want to do because the wobble with a 16 millimeter is absolutely horrendous. And then I just have to put it on my gimbal and I get, well, I get pretty smooth footage. So giving us more control over the image stabilization, image stabilization control, I, I certainly think is a benefit, even though I'm having trouble speaking. But back to that pixel shift. Is it a big deal? Well, I think it is. It depends. If they implement it like Sony did with the a7R5, 
where you can have vehicles moving, you can have animals and other subjects moving, I think it's a really big deal. Now, Panasonic did implement pixel shift with the S5 Mark II, but if you look at reviews by Gordon Lang, Dan Watson, and others, what you're going to notice is if there's a lot of movement in the frame from people, animals, or something else, you're going to see artifacts left over, and it's frustrating. But the Sony a7R5 doesn't have it. If Canon's implementation can give us, well, let's see, 45 megapixels times 4, so 180 megapixels without any artifacts in a firmware update, that's a really big deal. That's a huge deal. But now for the question many of you have been asking me, and sit back, relax, take a deep breath. This is about a fee. Will Canon be charging a fee for this firmware update? A lot of you said, wait a minute, if they're having dealer meetings, then most likely there's going to be a fee or something involved here. Well, I talked to Craig and he said this, free firmware. That's right, free firmware. It isn't going to cost us anything. This is going to be a free firmware update, and it's looking like a pretty impressive update. So pixel shift, that's really nice. I'm looking forward to that, but again, it depends on how it's implemented. Pixel shift along with image stabilization control, it's not going to cost us anything. And if we look at the rumored specs from what we got from just a couple of days ago, the uh, pre-shooting buffer, that's really, really good. The ability to have lens breathing correction or focus breathing control is also good. And in combination with removing that 30 minute record limit, a bane for videographers since, well, well, since video was introduced to stills hybrid cameras. And of course, improvements to the autofocus, uh, autofocus tracking of planes, trains, and bikes, motorcycles, bicycles. And also we have improvements to uh, how many animals are able to be tracked successfully in this firmware update as well. But I expect more links to come shortly. I'm getting pretty excited by this firmware update. I really look forward to it. As soon as it comes out, I'm gonna apply it right away and let you know what I think. And I'm gonna cover off that firmware update. But my recommendation for you is if you don't need the firmware update right away, wait a week or two, wait to see what I have to say about it because I'm gonna put it in, I'm gonna shoot with it, and I'm gonna let you know if there are any issues. Remember, a firmware update is adding new software to your camera or at least updating software to your camera and it can also implement bugs and that can make it less stable. But I'm getting pretty excited by this. If you wanna stay up to date on all the latest news and rumors regarding the Canon EOS R5 big firmware update, well then go ahead and subscribe and choose all notifications. I also cover up other stories, the R5 Mark II, Sony, all the major stories by all the major brands. So please subscribe and choose all notifications. But make sure you check your junk and spam folder because sometimes these notifications show up in there and people wonder why they're not getting their notifications. But that's it for now. I've got another video to record that's either going to come out later today or tomorrow. But thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a great weekend and we'll see you again soon.